Hello people. Um, so I just wanted to have a quick chat about something um, that kind of comes up a lot. So I teach a lot of uh, private students. I teach sound design and music production, guitar, stuff like that. Um, and you know, I'm going to talk specifically in relation to sound design and music production because I suppose that's what most people on this channel are interested in. Um, but I think this kind of goes across the board. Um, don't worry too much about the processes that other people have gone through to get to their end result. An awful lot of the time um, when I'm talking to people, they feel like there's a certain way to get to an eventual result. Um, if I talk about this in, specifically in relation to sound design, you know, they're worried about, you know, what synthesis method am I using to get this? You know, what effects should I be using in what order to, to, to get to this? When you're watching somebody you know, that's showing you their track and they've got, you know, a bunch of sounds um, loaded up that all look really complicated and they've got stacks of, you know, effects happening, you know, in parallel and series and there's like 40 effects. You know, they, they didn't think about that at the start. They didn't sit down and go, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, you know, five OTTs on this and then I'm going to set one to 56% and one to 53% and then after that I'm going to put three distortions and then a delay... They're just adding stuff in, seeing what's cool, you know, and reacting to what's on front of them. So, you know, when you're seeing these mad complicated things, that's that's somebody just sort of bringing something into just somebody who's who's sort of listening to what what they're getting when they add a new effect or when they when they, you know, do something in the synth. And they're they're sort of just reacting to what they're hearing and they're adding something else and then they're reacting. They're not necessarily thinking about this stuff beforehand. So what this leads to is, you know, when you go and watch a whole bunch of videos, which I don't necessarily recommend, um, when you go and watch a whole bunch of videos, all these like really top level producers and really top level sound designers and stuff, it kind of scares you off doing your own thing because you're like, oh, you know, that seems so unattainable. They know so much. When in reality, you know, the reason that they're able to get to that point is because They've spent a lot of time just experimenting and playing around with stuff. And, you know, sometimes that winds up being complicated, you know, in the end. And sometimes it isn't. A lot of the best sounds are really simple sounds. So I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial here at the end where I talk about, you know, just how you can get a lot out of just using really simple ideas. But I just wanted to put that point across first of, of you know, don't watch so many tutorials about, about you know, this insane process and chain and this insane this and how many tracks are in this production to get it to sound like this. Just just go in and if you have a plugin you like, play with it. If you think it's cool, you know, if you think you're getting a cool sound, put it in a song um, and react to what you're hearing yourself. And then over time, you know, you'll end up probably with big massive process and chains of stuff or you won't, either one is fine, um, and you'll have gotten there just because you're listening to, you know, the sound that you're making and you're reacting to it, not because you've got some plan in mind. So I think an awful lot of the time people get set back by watching these really complicated sound design videos because they think that they need to have such a wealth of knowledge and they really just don't, like, and an awful lot of people who are making these sounds don't have that much knowledge as it seems they have, they're just reacting. So, um, just you know to kind of put a to kind of put a lid on this i just wanted to talk really simply about just a couple of sounds that you can make you know you can make lead sounds that are really nice without doing too much you can make pads that are really nice basses that are really nice and you don't have to overcomplicate it so i mean if you just you know pick a waveform so i'm just going to go with this one it doesn't matter what it is so i'm just going to arm this track so i can play it so got this admittedly not great waveform here so you can play around with it find a space in it that you like the wavetable that's fine okay you can transform this by doing really simple stuff i've got the filter turned off here maybe i could add in a bit of noise or something but let's just add in i'm just going to add in a reverb i'm going to add in a convolution reverb so I'm going to bring this in and I'm just going to look for, you know, pretty big reverb tail here. So uh, let me look for some sort of hall. I'm just going to go with this. Hopefully this is long enough. Mix that in. 
that's fine. And then I'm going to add in, say, a delay. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Replica just because I like it. So Replica XT here. And then I'm just going to go in and edit some stuff in here. So let's say that I want it to be stereo. So I'm going to turn on the stereo. And I want to use the analog delay. It doesn't really matter. but So I've just put a couple of effects on here. And then even depending on where you where you play the notes. So if I bring it up higher. And then I play around with the with the reverb. So let's um let's just mess about with a couple of these reverbs and see which sounds best. So let's see if we can find something cool here. Probably a plate, maybe let's just use a big plate. Okay, so now we've got a reverb and a delay. I'm gonna turn up the um, the feedback on the delay so it goes on a bit. So this isn't a great sound. Right, it's just a waveform going through some effects. But I can make it a great sound pretty easily. So all I really need to change is just a couple of things. So first of all, I could maybe look through the waveform you know, what's the waveform like? Okay, maybe I don't like the buzziness of the waveform, so I'll bring in a filter just to take some of that off. Maybe it would work better as a pad, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just add a volume envelope here, and uh, I'm just going to bring it in intact so it sort of fades in. Now it sounds a bit static, so maybe I'll, you know, bring in an LFO here. And I'll just modulate a little bit the wave index. Just so it's moving slightly. Now I don't want it to be doing crazy stuff, so I'm just going to pull it really back slow. I just want a little bit more movement in the sound so it's not so static. And then I'm going to play around with it. I'm going to say, like, what's it like if I play it lower? What's it like if I, you know, open up the filter a little bit? So maybe I'll even bring in a different LFO here, just so I have different control over it. So I'm going to open up this LFO, and then I'm going to keep this LFO pretty small as well. I'm just going to use this maybe to mess around with the filter a bit, just open it up a tiny bit, just to give it a bit more movement. Let's play it up a bit higher. Now maybe instead of you know, having this volume envelope here, I could make it more of a pluck, so I could make it more of a decay sound, so I'll bring that. Oh no, definitely don't like that as much, so let's go back to this sort of more of a fade in with our attack. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not sounding great. Maybe I need to play around with another couple of things. Maybe if I add a chorus on here, it might sound a little bit better. And the reason I'm going through this, you know, so, so kind of slowly is to show you, you know, how these kind of chains and how these modulations come together. It's it's not, you know, something that's sounding great from the start. It's, it's a process you're going through where you're listening to something and you're going, does this sound good? So it sounded a bit better with that chorus on there. Let's have a, a, a move through some of the different chorus models and see which one I like the best. Now I'm just playing with my keyboard here, so maybe it might be best if I bring in, um, if I just bring in a chord progression that can play in the background while I play with the parameters here. So I like this one. Now I can mess around with my... Different chorus modes. This A voice one's kind of cool. Maybe I want to mess around with the speed, so actually maybe I'll just put all these effects into the actual effects chain of my, of my actual synthesizer here. And then I can use, you know, the same envelope in here to control a few different things, including the effects. So let's say that I 
use this kind of an envelope shape, maybe as my attack comes up, I'll test it out, but maybe as my attack comes up, the speed of the chorus could increase and maybe the mix a little bit as well. So let's try that. Maybe I'd even open up the filter a bit. I don't like this wavetable after all. Now, after going through all that and trying to make the wavetable work, I've decided I don't like the wavetable. So let's uh, let's just go for a different wavetable. So that's a completely different sound now. It's going through the same process and chain, but just changing this one element. So I know that this is kind of like, you know, an awful lot of the time when you get a tutorial on, on sound design or something like that, it's this really polished sort of, oh, and then I did this and then I did this. But a lot of the time, that's not how people are getting to the result. I may go through this entire sound and decide that, the, oh, this sound sucks, and then just start a new sound. And that's what people are doing. They're not, you know, these massive arbiters of intense knowledge where they just literally know everything. So this is the process that people go through. They, you know, they just kind of play with stuff. So that's kind of cool. Let's pull the wavetable back a bit. Maybe we could add some more processing. Maybe I don't like this reverb. Maybe we'll try it. Different... Maybe, okay. Maybe what I'll do is I'll turn this into a pluck. So I will try that again. I'll bring in a... So I'm still leaving all the modulation here from when it was a pad. I'm just trying something out. So I'm going to go to my ADSR here. And then I'm going to make like sort of a pluck shape. And the reason that I'm doing this instead of using the filter here is I just want everything to be pretty visual over here in the one place. So I could use the filter envelope um, and that would make a lot of sense too. But I'm going to just turn it into a pluck here just so everything can be seen. So let me just play that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on an arpeggiator just to see how that sounds. So... Let's put the arpeggiator on. And let's move through a couple of these different modes. So let's go for Blossom Down. And maybe I'll even, maybe what I'll do is I might bring this an octave down. Bring this down and I'll tighten up this envelope too. Okay, cool. And maybe I'll play around with a couple other waveforms. See what I've got. Maybe I'll try this up high. So I'll bring up the octave again. Right, so this sound kind of sucks. I don't, I don't like this, but I tried it. Okay, so let's take the arpeggiator off, and maybe I might have decided, you know, um, if I was going for something on my track, maybe I might have decided, you know what, that arpeggiator part higher and mixed with the pad would have been cool. But in this case, I just decided I didn't like the sound. So now I'm going to go back to playing with my sort of original idea with this filter envelope that's kind of opening up over time. Decided that's a good or sound, maybe I'll bring some noise in. That much noise. Now I'll flick through a couple of wave tables again. You know what I did that was cool once before is um, I like to use like convolution on stuff so that. Um, this is just a, a thing that I did before that I thought sounded cool. So I, I like to use like convolution on stuff where um, I, you know, put it through an amp or something like that. But I've got this plugin called Rapid, which is a synth. But I really like um, one of the lo-fi effects that are in it. So 
So this is just something that I've experimented with that I've decided, you know, might work in this context. So um, let me bring it up. So it's called the Vintageizer and it's got a bunch of different speaker models in here. So you can hear if I play it, I can choose these different speaker models and it gives it a totally different character. And then it's got some of this lo-fi lo stuff going on like noise, and drift, So you can get really cool textures with this, and then obviously I can mix it in. So that's kind of a cool thing. Then maybe I'll mess around with some of the wavetables again. See, it's not making as much of a difference now, because the filter's in play a lot more. So let's open that up more. bring up the release of the actual envelope. Alright, so that's a pretty cool sound, I think. Maybe I've decided after all that I don't like the convolution, and I want to try maybe like a Valhalla reverb or something. So, let's go to the room here. I'm gonna make it nice and long. I'm just gonna mess around with some presets. Maybe, let's try out some of the reverbs that are in Rapid, so I'm going to put this to the end of the chain, and I know I like some of the reverbs in here because I've played around with them before, so let me pull it up, maybe I'll put some glitch on this, no, how about that, how about not that, that was a terrible idea, so let's go with, um, yeah, let's just do a reverb, and I know that the Nova is pretty cool and the space is pretty cool. That's a pretty cool soundscape-y kind of sound. And then maybe I can mess around more with the wavetables. Put the filter a bit more. Maybe I'd even modulate that. So, you know, I know that this, you know, this tutorial hasn't been particularly, you know, informative about what you should do or, you know, what effects you should use. But what I'm trying to get across is, you know, the, the process that's important is not watching a bunch of YouTube videos of what people have done and them showing you sounds that they've spent an hour tweaking and then you, you expecting yourself to understand that stuff. Um, what I'm seeing most people doing, sorry, there's some background noise from Rapids uh, Vintageizer. But what people are actually doing is they're just playing around with the stuff they have and they're getting an ear for stuff they like and it just gives them something to follow. So when they hear something they don't like in a sound, they're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll try this. And sometimes maybe you like the sound and you just want to try something different. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this because I don't really think that a lot of, um, not a lot of people, but a lot of people just seem to think, I think that people know more than they do. And an awful lot of this from anybody that I see doing this that's good at it, is it's just sort of informed trying things out. Um, so hopefully this video will give you some permission to do that, you know, that not every decision you ha you make has to make the sound better. You can go back on things, you can try things out, you know, you might have messed around with something that was that seems like a completely stupid idea, but then you'll remember that when you're making another sound and go, actually, you know what, that would be quite cool here. Like, for instance, I put the glitch on here, which sounded terrible. So if I play this again, this uh, waveform is not as pretty as the one that I've seen before. So let's, uh, let's get one that's a bit nicer. Stratocaster one's kind of nice. So, you know, this glitch thing that I was using here before, if I put this, you know, I'll put this before everything. And I'll turn it on. And this is getting its information, I believe, from LFO1. So if I switch this up to one of the glitch presets here. So I think it is. Oh no, sorry, it's sequence one, isn't it? So so it sounds terrible at the moment. And if I go to glitch here. Maybe 
go try out a few of these. You know, it's a completely different sound now, so... If I go to... this one? Then mess around with my Venturizer. There's no such thing as a bad idea. You, you, in my opinion, should probably spend less time worrying about what other people know and what they think you should do and just play around with stuff and see what you like and, and build up your own palette of things that you can throw at sounds to get interesting textures. I know I've kind of rambled on about this a bit, um, but it is something that comes up a lot when I'm talking to people. And I think it's important that people understand you know, and give themselves the permission to just play around with stuff and not worry so much about whether or not the sound's always going to be good. Because, you know, most of the sounds that I've just been through sound of crap. There was a couple of good ones in there. There was a couple of ideas that I had that were just terrible ideas. And now in hindsight, I don't know why I even tried them. But every time that you do that, you're building up your sort of repertoire of, you know, ideas that you can throw at things in future that might work. So anyway... Uh, that's just been a video ranting about that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, you can subscribe if you want. I will be making more videos. Um, if you don't want to see those, I wouldn't subscribe because you might end up watching one on. <laughs> okay. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day uh, and have a fine evening or afternoon. And I'm going to turn the video off now. And I'm not going to edit it because uh, I'm too lazy to do that. So...